Hi everyone, it's Diane Evans with stampinwithdiane.com. I'm an independent Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the interior of British Columbia. So if you've just found me, welcome. I'm so glad that you have. If you're joining me through YouTube, make sure that you subscribe just down below. And if you're coming in through my Facebook group, make sure that you've given StreamYard permission. So this is part of a live. Um, this is every Tuesday. I do, how do they do that? It's my Technique Tuesday. And that's where I pick a technique and I'll show you a different technique and we'll make a card with it as well. And then I encourage you to make the card and also post it to my group. And the, and the link is to my group does just down below here. In any event, you guys, welcome. I again, I can't I can't say how much I really do appreciate that you do come on and watch me when I go live. It is part of a live. I will be talking to different people. So if that's one thing that you don't really necessarily like, watch it on the replay and you can just scoot on by that part. In any event, um, hello, Pam. I am going to be doing, now this is part two of the paper towel background. Hello, Margaret. How are you feeling? I'm hoping that you're okay from your surgery. In any event, this paper towel background, this is paper towel background, but I want to show you that you can use that same technique. And do I have the card I made last? This is the card that I had done. Um, and I want to show you another card that we could do using this same sort of thing that we did last time, but we're actually going to use it with dyes. Now, what I originally thought I would do was do something and I can show you what I had done. But you know what? I probably, I couldn't find the color that I wanted. So I'm coming in, protecting my um, my platform here. And oh man, I, I tell you, I can't wait until next month when I can order something that they're offering for a uh, joint offer. And it's a fantastic glass platform plate that you work off of. And oh my goodness, I am so looking forward to it. Okay, so let me refresh you on the back paper towel background technique. You can use any kind of paper towel that you want. The best to use are ones with a bit of a texture on it. These ones happen to be Bounty. You can use Bounty. You can use um, uh, Kirkland, Costco. You can use any of them, but they've got to have a deep impression. Without a deep impression, it doesn't work that well. All right. I cannot anywhere in this mess find my... Um, my um my pecan pie and the pecan pie is actually what i think really really makes this particular um card but we're going to go ahead and we're going to use copper clay now the best thing to do is just to take it and rub it i did find that by rubbing it i was actually wrecking part of um the um the stamp pad so i that's one thing that we don't want to do and you know it doesn't really matter that there's bounty you can see the bounty because trust me you're not going to see this afterwards i then am going in with um the crumb cake like i say i'm just reviewing this technique that i did last week i'm just going to put a tiny bit of crumb cake um, like I say, this is where I would use pecan pie instead. I, but like I say, I cannot, I cannot locate my pecan pie. And I know I used it for a particular card. And do you think I can find it? I can't. And then we're going to come in with, and this is where you would think what would be really nice would be um, pretty peacock. But I'm going to just use Lost Lagoon. And, you know, it doesn't really matter. I kind of want to have it a little uneven. And I don't mind that this is on here. I could even go and wipe that up. But I'm just going to show you how this, this works. And then I'll show you what we can do afterwards with it. So this is part two of this particular one. And I did say last week that I would do it. And I thought, you know what, I'm not going to, I was going to hold it off for a couple of weeks. And then I thought, no, I said I was going to do it last week. All right, so then what you want to do is you want to take your spritzer and all it has in here is water. Oh my goodness, now this one's not going to work. I just did this. I think it's because I've got the spritzer part right down on the bottom. Let me just try to get some of that water out of there and it just might work a bit better. 
You get two of these spritzers. Well, see, it's not even going to work. My goodness. I'll just grab another one. Okay, so these spritzers do come in a pack of two. And I'm hoping, yeah, this seems to be. Oh, here's another one. So maybe this one is the one that's going to work. Yeah, here we go. So this is something if you go on the internet and you find this background technique, it does not call for any of the, the spritzing on it. I found the spritzing was amazing. This goes a little red, and that's the reason why the pecan pie has more yellow in it. And I really like the yellow that goes in it, um, as opposed to the red. But Now, when I was doing this today, because I had to pre prep some of it, I thought it was really neat how it looked on the back of it. It was a different type of a um, texture on the back of it. Oh my goodness. Am I using the wrong one again? So what I'm just going to do is flip this over and we're going to get this wet on the back as well. Look at this. This is going to be kind of neat. It's going to pick up some of that other color there. I'm going to do something else with this. This will be quite nice, I think once it's dry now it, the colors do they mute out when they're dry so i'm actually going to show you what they look like so this is this is the one right side of it and then see that's how it's going to that's how it looks and like i say in this card that's kind of how it, how it it looked behind this die now wait till you see this one so I am going to bring in that same die. We're going to make a very similar card, but you're going to see the two different on there. I'm going to come in with my cut and emboss machine. Oh dear. And I want to show you how this is going to work. So I'm going to use the aspen trees again. And I'm going to go and I'm thinking this looks kind of cool this way. So let me just move this kind of off to the side and you can kind of see it. So see how this is going to go off this way. So I'm just going to come. This is going to have some of that. See how that copper clay goes a little red. So I'm going to come in with it like that. And I'm just going to put it into my die, die cutting machine. And then we're just going to run this through. Now, what I've done is I've made sure that this is really, really dry. Um, so I kind of did that earlier this afternoon. And then what I did was I went and I took this paper towel and I glued it onto just a piece of cardstock. And then we're just going to run this through. And like I say, this is just amazing how this works. And we're going to do a little bit more with it. Now, because it's going through two thicknesses, I'm going to run through it twice. And then I'm going to show you something else. So I don't, and there's a lot of detail on this particular die. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to, you can see where it didn't quite cut through on here. And I am going to, I turned it over and I'm going to run it through as well twice we'll run it one way and then we'll run it the other way and that should cut through we'll take a look Oops. yeah that works now if i didn't let this glue dry it would kind of gum up your um your dye on there so let's just poke that through and now take a look at these trees Oh, look. So I'm just going to take this and. Oops. Just going to take this from the back side. And really, if you. 
kind of tear it, it's okay as well because it is a paper towel. And I'm going to show you the one that was from last week, um, what it would look like, but I didn't cut it properly. But talk about mistakes because honestly, this wasn't even intended to have anything that looked like this. Like I say, we were just going to use that die cut on there. So see how now we've got this beautiful thing with the trees. But I really like the one from last week because of the pecan pie. Take a look. Isn't that pretty? In any event, now what we want to do is we want to turn around and we want to cut this one out. Just going to pop those two or those couple of extra pieces. Now, if we had something that was oval, this would be really nice as an oval. But I'm going to turn around and what we're going to do is we're going to actually put this onto just here. Now, what we could do, too, is you could sit and you could also emboss this, but we're not going to do that. Now, I need to come in. You need to have, because this would tear, um, what you need to do is you need to have a guillotine type cutter like this. So I'm just going to go in and cut that off. And then we can just go in here. That's about an inch. And let's see what size that is. That looks a little too big for this. Oh, it's not too bad. But I'm going to come in and I'm going to actually do some sponging on there because I find that this is this is too big. This should be four inches. Turn this. Yeah, this should be four inches. It shouldn't be. And it should be five and a quarter. So I don't know where that sits on there. Oops. So like I say, it's it's a must make. You're right, Dolores. It just I want to cut this off just a bit. So I want you to try doing it with the background and then also doing it as oh, I said that was four, so it could be five and a quarter, right? That's a little short. It's okay. All right, and then we're going to want this four by five and a quarter as well. All right, so I really think um, that the water really makes it nice. This one, it kind of looks like it's not quite watered down as much as those are, but it will work. So let's just put that off to the side. Now I'm thinking too, what I want to do, and I don't know how well this is going to work, but we're going to give it a try. In the grove, or grove, the grove dies, there's a couple of deer in here. So I'm actually going to cut out, and I'm not going to cut out the real fancy, fancier deer, the one with the pointed ears. I'm going to try cutting these out and we'll see how well that works with this die cut. So let's see if this is that's pretty short. Hmm, didn't plan that very well. You know what? I can go on to this one and I can use this part over here. So all right, maybe I'll just do the small one. And there should, I think there's another one on here. Anyways, we'll try this. We'll see how it works because I'm not sure how it's going to work. I'm going to come in with the little cut and emboss. We're going to see how that works. I didn't try that out before. This paper wasn't actually dry, so... didn't think that was going to work. 
So look at that deer. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another deer, but I want it, and it, we're going to have kind of the feet sort of cut off because it's not quite big enough, but it is. It's a very striking um, Oh my goodness, even the feet worked. Uh, <laughs> uh, that other piece I did will be quite striking. This one here is going to be very striking, this particular one. Look at it. That is so fun. And I'm just going to let that dry and we'll do another science project with that one tomorrow or the day after or whenever. Okay, so this is just going to go on here. But like I say, I think it needs a bit of something done on here. To me, that's just too flat. You could run it through an embossing folder. But I'm kind of thinking that it just needs just something on it. So this is Lost Lagoon. And like I say, I'm just putting some color on here just so that we've got the color to make it look a little uneven, right? And I know it looks quite a bit the same as the other card, but we definitely just want that too. Now, I know I have the copper clay here as well. there <laughs> and this die yes this die is amazing so like I say all I'm doing is just getting a tiny bit and dirtying up the background I sure hope that works if not I've got another piece of paper here so this is going to go like this and see how it just sort of changes it just oh you know what I think this will look quite nice kind of gives it kind of a stormy type sky. This will be posted on my group at 9.05 tomorrow with all the different information with the dyes and that. So see how that works. Now it's giving just a tiny bit different of that. And now I'm going to put that on to, I really think it looks really nice, I think is the pecan pie. So let me just bring that scoring blade in because I didn't score it either. Four and a quarter. Now I guess we could look at the copper clay. Let me grab the copper clay and you can tell me which one you think looks the best on. So there's that. Just grab a piece of copper clay. So let's see which one. You tell me which one you like. So it's this. This one. Or this one. Yeah, I can definitely pop this up. That'll give more depth. By all means, it will. But which one do you think? Pecan pie? or copper clay. So you said dimensionals? Yeah, I'll sit there and I'll put some dimensionals on here. Now it is rather flimsy, but it'll work. We're gonna have to use lots of dimensionals on here. Copper clay, oh, I don't know which one the second one is, Myrtle. This one's pecan pie, this one's copper clay. So one, two. We've got two copper clay, one pecan pie. I think the copper clay might be the route to go. And the reason being is because of um, the copper clay being in there. Okay, 
copper clay it is. So I'm just going to cut this one off. Let's just take a bit of these. Okay. Yeah, if it was more of the other one that I used. Oops, I'm going to have to actually cut this a bit more. So because of these things here, I'm just going to have to cut this. And that's okay. Yeah, because we don't want those showing through, right? That one can go right there. And do I have any more? Let's see, a couple more of those. Let's put this up here. Let's see if that's going to be enough on there. Look at that, it's tearing. That's interesting. I think I'm gonna just gonna come in with this. That's kind of a fun technique. We can turn around and do that as well. Oh, thank you. Yes, make sure that you do try these techniques and post them. Like I say, the last week I really liked it with it as the background but i wanted to show you now think of this also um, this would be beautiful with flowers kind of have to watch what flowers that you're using and it's going to have to be flowers that you could die cut and show the image or, or the the shape and not ones that get lost because you have the um stamps with it so let's just go there There we go. Copper clay is set. So let's go in and just cut the copper clay. So in Imperial, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I don't know what those measurements are down in Australia or in Europe, but half of your cardstock scored in half. Let's use our foam folder on there. Right. So here, let's go ahead and put this on here. See how that, oh, you know what would be really nice is just a tiny bit smaller. I wonder if I can do that. Um, I just find that there's too much, not enough other, it's, yeah, I'm going to take this down to three and three quarters. or close to four and seven, eight, or three and seven, eight. And then this piece would be taken off about an eighth. It's quite thick and I think I've got, let's see how that's going to look. There, I think that's better on there. All right, then we have our deer. And where did they go to? There's one. And there was a little one. Where did the little one go to? There we go. There, we're gonna do it that way. Um, and of course, what we want to do too is now what we want to do is put a sentiment on there. I don't know if I want to go with, let's see, do I want to go with copper clay sentiment or do I, I think copper clay is probably the better. Let me just grab a small piece of that. And let's see. Oh, thank you. 
All right, so let's go here. This um, stamp set, the Aspen trees. Well, it's not Aspen trees. It's it's actually the perched in a tree is amazing. No matter the season, I'm here for you. Your kindness warmed my heart, wishing you an abundant joy and peace. Just beautiful. Um, so I really like this one. I think I'm going to go with that one again. Um, you always need those kind of um, cards. So I'll just go and and I think what we can do with this we're going to end up doing some fussy cutting with it as well. And I just want to make sure. How's that looking there? Ah, oh, perfect. Thanks, Lala. All right. And I do, I really love this linen thread, so we're going to use it. And on the last card, I meant to use, I wanted to use copper, and I ended up using gold. So I am going to go in with the copper, and we're going to see how that looks. We might change to the gold, who knows. But the copper, we don't use the copper embossing full, uh, enough. So just going to put this on here, and I'm going to end up fussy cutting a part of it and I went <laughs> oh my goodness I'm losing it so I'll come in with my copper embossing powder ah uh, thank you Margaret it's quite masculine but masculine cards are great sometimes people have a lot of problems with masculine cards I have so many um masculine cards in this room I have two boys so oops let me just plug this heat this heat tool in Yeah, that other one I did today is going to be very pretty with that copper clay mixed in there. Let's just see how that turns out. It's going to be quite subtle. Let's just see how that is. Ooh, you know what? I think the gold was better. Just because it showed up better. Oh, you know what? The gold would be, or the copper would be really good with the, let me show you this. I think this would be really cool. You. and we're going to come in with the copper with this one on the Lost Lagoon. I really like copper clay and Lost Lagoon together. They're such a nice color combination. There we go. Beautiful font on this particular sentiment as well. We're almost done. So if you have any techniques that you'd like to see done, um, if I've already done it, I'm going to do it with a twist um, and do something a little bit different with it, but it'll work just great. All right, so see, this will go on here. Yep, that works great. So I'm just going to come down, and we're just going to fussy cut this bottom part. When you fussy cut, make sure that you're guiding your paper with your left hand or if you're right-handed the opposite but there we go all right so let's get this on here and then we can put those on there Ooh. Uh, 
that on there. And this is popped up with dimensionals. Just going to put a dimensional behind this deer here. We have to use our little ones. And we're going to just put some glue on the back side of this. I had five deer, two fawns, well, three fawns, I guess, and two does out in the yard yesterday, out in the front yard, eating my cedars. All right, and then let's put this one right here. So we're just going to put a strip on there. If you like this, remember to give me the thumbs up. Share my video. I really do appreciate that. And if you live in Canada and don't have a demonstrator that you're working with, I'd love to work with you. So this is just going to go on there. This is going to go here. I'm going to pop that up just a bit more. I do have some berry vanilla to go on the inside of this card. I did have. There we go. Oops. I really, like I say, if you're going to do something like this, use it with a pecan pie. The pecan pie, if it's mixed with the... Um, this is not right. The pecan pie, if it's with, um, this would be three and three quarters. And I think this is five inches here. Yep. Um, pecan pie looks really good with it. That's for sure. All right. And I'm not going to do too much on the inside. I'm just going to, I'll just put these splotches on there. And I think we'll do them in the copper clay as well. And my copper clay is here because I know it was on this table. There we go. You like the partial cut sentiment? Yeah, it looks kind of nice that way. That's for sure. All right. Oh, I don't like that. Magical paper. Just like that. And let's put this on with dimensionals as well. Ah, Judy, yeah. This is part two from last week. Hello, Susan. Yes, it does. It, it, and it makes it so different. And people would go, ooh, how do you do that? Because it's it's just not one of those techniques. And like I say, I I really changed it up quite a bit too, so... Okay, so just like that. So we should have put some string on there. That would have been good. I don't want to tie a bow with it. Oh, I know what I could use. So just like that. We have these. There's a couple that I've got here. I've got these speckled dots that I think I'll use the copper clay ones. And the one right over here. There we go. So there's your paper towel background with dyes. Um, I hope you like that. Let me bring in the other one, the paper towel background that was used as a background. Oh my goodness, where did it go? So it just shows you same sort of card, just a different technique on there. I quite like this one, but this one is quite stunning when you think of it. Look at the trees with it. Yeah. Anyways, there you go. All right, so thank you very much for joining me. I like I say, I really do appreciate that. Thanks, Kath. Thanks, Judy. 
Okay, so what is happening? So tomorrow at three o'clock, I'll be doing my mystery challenge. Hopefully I'm not going to be late. Um, I thought it was going to be late today because my son from Montreal went and called me. So it's always a treat to get a call from him um, because I never know when to call them. That's for sure. All right, you guys. So we'll see you tomorrow, 3 o'clock p.m. Um, there will, the clues will be going live at noon tomorrow. And I hope that um, we'll see you tomorrow at noon. So there you go. Thanks so much. Bye for now.